All right, so today we are going to get a .env file set up. And so .env is pretty similar to a uh, config file, except it is not mutable. Um, we also hide some of it um, from our actual versioning or from GitHub or Bitbucket to be specific. So we need to first download or install this package, vlucasphp.env. Then we're going to run composer install. First, we need to add a .env.example. .env.example will have something like app name, and then we'll say slim for authentication, and then we'll have something like app debug, and we'll say true, and then maybe it has like db host, and we'll say 127.0.0.1, db name equals, um, I don't know, slim, db username equals uh, homestead because that's what we will use in a future video and db password equals secret um, and then you just go etc continue adding those so env.example is what is added to your um, github repository now what is not added is our .env file. So the .env file would be what is actually used and then it basically has .env.example gets copied over to the .env and then maybe you add like your production user and then your production db password, production db name. You don't want to add that to your uh, your version control because people can access your version control and you don't want every single dev on a larger team to be able to access your database stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this script. In this script right here, we're going to use composer scripts. And all this does is whenever you do a fresh install of your repo, it will install it will run this command after the package is installed. And all it says is if the .env exists, use it. Otherwise, copy .env.example to .env. And now that is set up. For our purposes right now, we'll just leave it like it is, and we will tell our package to properly reference that. Okay, so next, we're gonna add a new service provider. And this is going to be our environment variables service provider just like that just like usual that's going to extend the service provider then we're going to do public function register public function boot just like that and then we are going to use dot env slash dot env we want to use this, and so we're going to use .env.env, and then we're going to say try env equals dot .env, create a mutable base path. And so what this is going to do is it's going to look for the .env file. This package by default looks for the .env file in the path we pass it. And remember base path points to the authorized slim4 directory. So by default, it's going to be looking for .env inside our authorized slim4 directory. And we have one. So it's going to find this, and it's going to add all of the variables we define right here. It's going to add those to our global env. So we'll be able to like app debug. Um, but more than that, there's a global helper in PHP called get env. So we'll be able to do app debug. And we'll even take that a step further. We're going to create a helper function called just env. Um, so first it's going to try to do that. If it can get the env, it's going to load it. Otherwise, we're going to catch the invalid path exception error, and we won't do anything with it. Finally, we're going to add our new service provider right here. We're going to say slash app slash provider slash environment variable service provider class. 
And then the last thing we need to do is we're going to create a new helpers. And we actually need to get rid of these use statements. We're not using any of these in our helpers file. And then we're going to add a env. And all env is going to do is if it doesn't already exist, then we will define a new env function. It's going to have a key and the default value will be false. The value is actually going to be get env key and then we're going to throw an exception when there is no value and no default. So when we try to get an env variable by its key and there is no value aka get env key and there is no default passed in then we're going to throw an error and we're going to say key is not a defined dot env variable and has no default value if all of this does work though we're going to try to return the value and if the value is false or null then we'll return the default that we pass so now what we can do is we can do, for example, in our app or in our .env, we have our app name, right? And so what we can do now is we could go back to our error middleware from the previous video and we could do if env app debug is true, otherwise, if app debug is true, then add middleware otherwise don't show the debug information we don't want random people knowing any more about our app than they need to if it doesn't exist though if the app debug environment variable does not exist then we're going to default it to false more than that you can use the env in culmination with our app or with our config so in our config app we could do name equals env app name or slim for auth app. So if no app name exists, then it will be name, um, etc. etc. So there we go. And I'm going to remove these for now. We'll add those back later. And then the last thing we're going to do is just prove everything works. Um, we're going to go to our auth home. We're just going to do env and then we'll do app name. We'll do app name, that is an existing key. Oop, dot env, dot env not found. Ah, so this is supposed to be lowercase right there. Just like that. Now if we reload our page. Home page, slim4 authentication. Of course, if we would go back to our home.blade.php, we're getting the environment variable for our app name, and the environment variable for our app name is slim for authentication. So now let's try this. Non-existing env value will default to value dynamically added or value defaulted to me. Just like that. And so we should get value defaulted to me. And we do. And so guys, that is the uh, .en, uh, the .env setup in a nutshell. Um, what's really cool about this, ooh, last really important step. We want to add the .env to our .getignore. This is extremely important. This just says, okay, hey, let's clear this out. Let's do GST and see how .env is right there. .env should not be there. We do not want to add .env to our, um, we don't want to add .env to our GitHub repository. So by adding it to the .getignore, it should ignore the .env. Um, Git or Bitbucket should ignore the .env. So guys, that's all I got for today. Um, and next time we will get into doing a little bit of refactoring and setting up a kernel so we can have route groups with global middleware, group specific middleware, an HTTP kernel, and um, refactor some of the 
stuff that really shouldn't be in service providers like loading our environment variables and uh, some other stuff and we'll refactor that to a different layer which will be the kernel layer so guys thanks again this is Zachary Horn with clean code studio clean code clean life if you liked or learned something new today uh, like and subscribe every like every subscription just it helps a lot guys um, so next time we will be getting on Samba kernel thanks again Simple.